Hi, I'm Linda at American Patchwork and Quilting, and I'm here with Angela Walters, Ambassador for Handy Quilter. And we're at the Sweet 16 machine, and we were talking about how to quilt a border. And you have some great tips on how to do that, because I've always just done it in one long strip. So what are your ideas? Well, I will say that quilting borders are my least favorite part of the quilt to work on. Um, it just seems like dealing with those long sections, whether you're on a sit-down machine like the Sweet 16, or even on a long arm with the vertical, border, vertical borders, it can be kind of a pain. So instead of trying to quilt those all in one long line, I like to break the border up in chunks, which means that I can work my way down the quilt easily, quilting the border as I go. Oh, that's a great idea. So one example would be a feather. A feather is a really traditional design a lot of machine quilters like to use. It looks gorgeous, but instead of quilting the feather, one long line down the border, you can actually quilt it in chunks, which is what I've done on this quilt. Great. I like to make the feathers smaller and make them look as though they're running off of the border of the quilt. Now, I could say that I like the juxtaposition of the design or something artsy, but it's really just that it's easier. So by using the quilting to break it up in chunks, a lot easier to manage. And again, even if you're on a sit-down machine, because if you have to reposition that quilt to just quilt that one line, it's gonna be kind of a pain. Right, now when you do that, do you start and end at the same place, or how do you keep going? Pretty much, I'm, when I'm quilting, I'll quilt this feather, come back here, and then continue on the quilt. So then when I rearrange, oh, okay. I can easily move and quilt the next one. That's now this perfect. is a really formal, traditional kind of feather, but I have a fun feather variation that's really easy to quilt, and it's perfect for borders. Oh, well, let's look at that. Now I like to call it the paisley feather, just because it's um, a feather type design, but it has paisleys as the petals instead of your traditional traveling, um, which makes it really nice. Plus, it's really echo heavy, so if you have a little trouble getting it to look perfect, just add some more echoes and call it good. Always a good solution. Now, I like to use the gloves when I'm machine quilting on the sit-down machine. You definitely don't have to, and if you don't, then don't worry about it. It just helps give me a little bit more grip on the machine. Now, most traditional feathers have that long uh, spine, but this is more of a curve. So when you're starting this design, you're gonna quilt a swirl or an elongated kind of curve, and this right here is gonna act as the spine of your feather. Okay. And then you're going to turn back to the to the beginning, so something like that. Now I like to make them skinny, but you can have it wider apart depending on the area that you're filling. Now instead of the regular petals, I'm adding a paisley in here, and a paisley is just kind of like a teardrop shape, mm -hmm. and then I'm echoing around it. So there's one, and when I'm ready, I'm just going to add the next one, just going swinging out and coming back. No traveling, you don't have to worry about keeping the spacing perfect because you can just add more echoes around it and then echoing. So what I'm gonna do is work my way around the whole outside of this swirl, adding these paisleys. Now, the great thing is, it's really versatile, and depending on how big your border is, you can make these longer, you can add more echoes, you can really make the area fit. You make it fit the area that you're working with. Okay. And when I, I'm gonna work my way around, and if you're working on a sit-down machine, one of the benefits is you can change the orientation of your quilt. So if you have the ability to, you could just tweak it this way if you want. Um, if not, you just work your way around normally and putting it around. Now, I'm using a contrasting thread color so you can really see the design, and I think it looks really good, but if you use this design with a thread color that matches the quilt top, it's gonna look great. It's gonna have a gorgeous texture to it. It's gonna look real nice. Oh, I can see that. That would be really nice on border. Now, as I'm making my way into the center of that swirl, you can tell I'm kind of gonna be running out of room. So I'm just gonna make them a little smaller. Again, just working my way in, and as far as you need to, tucking it in there. And when you get to center, then I'm just gonna echo my way all the way back out. So that's kind of the individual element. So you could quilt it just like that, or if you wanted, you could come add more echoes around it, okay. quilt your next one. But it's a really nice design that adds a little bit of a custom look to your quilting, but it's actually really easy. That's perfect. And then you would just go from there right into your next quilt block yep. or whatever. Uh -huh. Thanks so much, Angela. I really appreciate you helping me break down those borders into pieces instead of having to do the whole length of them. And I hope these tips have helped you to better understand how to tackle your borders, whether you're working on a long arm machine or at your sit down or a domestic sewing machine.